This is Gina, Epilepsy Support Specialist to Cloud9 Wellness in Corning, New York, on Market Street. I gotta get real with you guys today, seriously. It's been so long already since I've done a video, and I really wanted to make this one for you, but I am exhausted. I feel terrible today, but I'm gonna get it done. It ain't gonna be pretty, but I'm gonna get it done for you. So here goes it. Grand Mal, aka tonic clonic seizures. A few weeks ago I had one, and I've been having them a lot lately, because we're messing with my medication, so I have a lot to say about them. A lot. So I'm gonna try and make this as quick and painless as possible. I hate long videos. So here goes. Grand Mal seizures. They're the seizures that everybody thinks about when they hear seizures, or a fit, or an event, or whatever. They're the messy ones, they're the scary ones, they're the dangerous ones. Um, they last one to three minutes. Once I hit five minutes, it's an extreme medical emergency. You lose consciousness, you hit the floor, your body's stiff, you're jerking, you bite your tongue, the inside of your cheek. You can have foam and spit and blood pouring out the side of your mouth. You can lose control of your bladder, um, your bowel movement. Um, you're stiff as a board. Even your involuntary muscles are just tight. And your muscles are rhythmically jerking and pulsing and it's it's so terrible <sighs> you're unconscious so when you wake up you're nauseous and confused and if you're lucky you weren't alone and somebody was there to take care of you so you don't get hurt but sorry I don't I didn't know what was going on behind me um, but then there are times when you're alone, and you fall and you hit your head, or you twist your ankle, or you fall down the stairs, or you burn yourself, or you fall in the shower or you're outside, or you're in public. It's... It's scary. Those of you that have these type of seizures, you totally understand. It's... It's extremely scary to keep a positive attitude and an outlook on life I never thought would be possible. I really never did. I grew up a healthy child. At 14 years old, I had my first seizure three days before my first day of high school. And I remember waking up to the hottest, hottest EMTs over me, which was the only awesome thing. But everybody else looked like they were going to cry over me. I honestly had no clue what to do, so I did what <laughs> the only thing I could think to do was to slap a big smile on my face and joke about everything. And for a while, that's what I always did. I just faked it. I was a phony, big old phony for a while. Even though inside, I just, I, let's be real, I wanted to kill myself. I didn't want to be here anymore. I didn't. And... A lot of us don't. A lot of us don't want to deal with it. A lot of us are petrified. We're scared and we're alone. We know that our family's there. Some of us don't have family that are there. But even if we do, we feel utterly alone. I got really lucky. And I have a great family. And I now have been blessed with an amazing group of people that may not necessarily go through what I go through, 
but they do go through some things that we can kind of understand each other in a way, and it's given me strength to reach out to help others like me. And I want you guys to know that I'm there for you whenever you need me. Literally, I'm a phone call away. I'm a text message away. My phone is always by me because I know what it's like to go through not having anybody understand. And when people tell you that they understand, you want to punch them in the face because God knows they don't. Sorry. You don't know what it's like to lose control over yourself, to not know when, oh, you're just, you're going to go down and that's it. You don't know what people are going to say to you. You don't know how people are going to react. You don't know you can't do everything that everybody else can do anymore. I mean, it depends on what your triggers are, too. I can't go to concerts anymore. My husband loves video games. I can't play video games. I can't even be in the same room with him when he plays it. I can't drive. I can't work. There are so many things that I can't do that I used to, you know, love to do. And it's taken me a long time to see that that's okay. That it's true in every disability there is an ability. And I'm here for a reason. I am worth something. And let me be there for you. Let me, let me lift somebody else up like I've been lifted up before. Um... I don't just have grand mal seizures, I have tonoclonics, I have myoclonic seizures, I have um, absent seizures, I have... And it wouldn't surprise me if I have other kinds too. We're just now figuring, you know, from the time I was 14, just now, at age 30, I'm just learning what's actually wrong with me. So... I can, I can level with you. I can level with most of you. So if you want to talk to anybody, I'm here. I don't care if I just fell out of a seizure and I'm just waking up. I'll still answer the phone or I'll call you back. Just let me know. And I also have a support group and I would love it if you joined us. We're pretty cool people. Doesn't matter where you're from at all. We have people from England, from Australia, from India. We'd, we'd love to have you. Thanks for listening.